We'll start with our invocation by Rotarian Shira. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Oh God, ungiver of all good, we thank thee for our daily food. May Rotarians, ro may, ro may Rotary, Rotarian friends and Rotarian ways help us to serve thee all our days. Amen. Thank you, Sharia. The loyal toast, Rotarian Simone. <clears throat> to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. To the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you, Simone. Welcoming, visiting Rotarians and guests, Secretary Donet. Um, yes, thank you, President. And as we speak, um, people are still coming in. Members are joining the room. So let me start with visiting um, Rotarians. Um, our guest speaker is actually a Rotarian. So I'd like to especially welcome Rosina Duncanson of Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau. And I am sure that she has a number of her club members because I see where we're almost um, equal in numbers with our <laughs> guests. So I'm going to ask that you open your mic. So I don't know the positions and I don't know some of you personally. So starting with um, Tanya, can you open your mic and just say in your club as we welcome you to our meeting? Hi, good morning. I'm Tonya Farrell. I'm with Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau. Um, well, I don't want to say the best club, but I feel that it's the best Rotary Club. I love my club. I came to support Rosina on our presentation today. Thank you for having me. Yes. Take up Welcome. Welcome. Being here. So, <laughs> good morning, Felix. The Galaxy, morning. and you're the best club in your um section of Nassau. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's an excellent way to put it. Thank you for having me. We're all the best. Um, anyone else from South East, East Nassau? Good morning. Yes. Candace Hepburn. I'm also from South East Nassau. Um, I'm going to support Tanya's sentiments and not say um, we're the best club, but I'm also here to support Rosina. Awesome. We welcome you and we hope you enjoy the meeting. I'm sure you will. Anyone else from Southeast Nassau before I move on? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Ruth Bethel here, Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau here to support Rosina and also to support Nassau Sunrise. Okay. Thank you. We're happy to hear that. Thank you so much. Anyone else from Southeast Nassau? Good morning, everyone. Um, Secretary Leon from Southeast Nassau. Happy to join you guys this morning. Okay, welcome, Secretary Leo. Anyone else from Southeast Nassau? All right, so we're going to move to Elut Elutra, past President Jackie Gibson. Welcome. Please open your mic and say good morning as we welcome you. A pleasant good morning. I'm P.P. Jackie Gibson from the Great People's Republic of Elutra, and we're here to support South, sorry, Rotary Clubs of, of Sunrise, and I'm actually intrigued by the topic, and I bring greetings on behalf of my president, Audrey Carey. Okay, great, and that's mm. the best club in Eleuthera. <laughs> Absolutely the best in Eleuthera. <laughs> right. Okay, we also have on the, in the meeting, PP Kimmy from Turks and Caicos. PP Kimmy, open your mic and just say good morning as we welcome you. Good morning, Rotary family and friends. Um, mm -hmm. bringing, bringing greetings from the beautiful by nature Turks and Caicos Islands. The best club, from the best club in Turks and Caicos. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, welcome also to PP. President Alicia, who's always here. This is her second home. President mm -hmm. Alicia, open your mic so you can say, hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> you. As Greetings, you everyone. Thank you for having me, as always. Yes, great to have you. DGE, um, DGE Louis oh. Weaver oh. from beautiful St. Martin as well. Yeah. Welcome. Okay, good, good morning. I, uh, want to tell everybody we are the best district in the world, 1720. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, we are. We're happy to have you. Also visiting um, Rotary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. PP, 
PP Derek from Roger Club of Old Four. Mm -hmm. The best Good of morning, the best. Morning. Welcome. The best of the best. <laughs> Unapologetically. But it's, it's always good to be here. This is second home and also second home. Uh, <laughs> Welcome support. back. It's two hits because I get thank you. It's good to be back. It's and I'm also thank you. Like I said, I'm you're young. Friend. You still I'm have another friend. five years. Mm -hmm. Where exactly? <laughs> is that PP Arrow? <laughs> That's right. Good morning, PP Arrow. My apologies. I'm doing my morning exercise. I'd like to welcome all of our guests this morning since my mic was open anyway. Okay, okay. Great. wonderful. All right, so um, just making sure I'm not missing any other Rotarian um, visiting. Okay, so um, did I miss any Rotarian? If you're in the house, open your mic and just say, hey, because Yes, I'm so hurt. You missed past oh, president. Oh, PP, PP, who's always here. Oh my gosh, PP, Delisa, and I wrote down your name. Um, <laughs> PP, Delisa, you are like a member of NASA Sunrise. We uh, we adopted you from July. Yeah, here. You've been here almost every week or very regularly. So we welcome you. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, who else? Um, so I'm moving over to Rotorat. Am I missing any Rotarian before I move to Rotorat? I see a Stephen. I'm not sure if Stephen is a Rotarian or you're here to support um, the, our guest speaker or you're just a supporter of NASA Sunrise. He's actually a guest of, of mine. He's a guest? He's a guest, yes. Oh, guest awesome. So <laughs> see, you have your own constituency. <laughs> like a bus load came this morning. Thank you so much for being here, Stephen. We hope you enjoy the meeting. Also visiting from uh, Rotaract, we have our Rotaract president, PP, um, President Latoya, and there's PP Robin. Good morning and welcome. Am I missing any other Rotaractor? I'm scanning the list. Good morning, Deloren Ferguson. Yes, Deloren, welcome. As usual, you're always here, so we're happy to have you. Okay, and I think that covers the Rotaractors. So I'll move to guests of Rotarians, and I have a guest this morning, Yvonne Gibson Sands, who has been visiting for some time. It shows that she has been enjoying our meeting. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. Good to be here. Okay. Are there, are there any other guests of Rotarians? Morning. My guest has already been welcome, but I'd like to officially welcome her. The guest speaker, Rotarian Rosanna Duncanson, and all of her guests, welcome. Okay, awesome. All right, so with that said, I just want to welcome all the Rotarians. Exactly. I, have a, I have a guest as well. Oh, you have a guest, okay. <laughs> Christina Roll. <laughs> <laughs> Morning and welcome, Christina. <laughs> You know, you see what, what do you call when you... Um, we just say, Christina, that? it's great to see you. That's all. That's, it's great to see you. Okay, so welcome, everyone. Enjoy you know, the meeting. You know. And before I hand over Felix, to the... Felix like to play, you know, Carla Ian doing a good job keeping him in line. That's what... <laughs> but you okay, know, we so... haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> Is it true? Before I hand over, he's welcoming you back to the club officially, and I second. Well, no, no, uh, President Francis, she was right there during the holidays, packing toys very diligently. She was a very dedicated member. I must I stand up for her. Mister, then. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't take a well, you know. you know, quite with her. Right? Christina, that's the kind of welcome, welcome you get when you're I'm missing in action. But um, just before I hand over to President, I want to present this morning's raffle. It's a beautiful, actually I have one of these, so I know it's awesome. Um, so it's a Keurig um, coffee maker. You can make coffee or tea. Mm -hmm. And of course it comes with a supply of pods, coffee and tea pods. So please enter your order in the chat and you will take home today this beautiful coffee maker. Beautiful on your kitchen counter, or you could use it in your office. Mm -hmm. Secretary right, so Donis, I, I think you're doing too well of a job promoting this career because I see everyone <laughs> signing up now. I, I already cleared the space in my office desk for this. <laughs> 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 
So I need I think to make some money. Today. I need to make some money. So just double up your tickets if you want to increase your chances. <laughs> All right. So back to you, President Francis. Thank you, Secretary Donnett. And I just saw Rotarian Cresswell popped in. Perhaps he would like to share in the rotary, uh, purchasing a rotary ticket as well. And now we'll move to uh, Sergeant at Arms. Father P, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody? I see Felix taking job at Christina. That's not nice, you know, Felix. When a, when a sinner comes home, there should be great rejoicing. <laughs> no sarcasm. And Dino joined him as well. Two senior members who ought to know better. Give me $5 each, please. Okay, I was, I came to Christina's age. That'll be $7. You know, you better keep close. Keep close. Yeah. Keep, <laughs> keep, 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 keep your mouth. Stay keep quiet. <laughs> Oh, you got a beard on me. Okay. Where's Cresswell, man? I ain't find Cresswell for a little while. Cresswell, are you alive? Yes, he is. All right. Give me five dollars, please. In addition to here. Huh? Daddy no home. Daddy no home? <laughs> okay, well, since the little boy home, Cresswell, give me five dollars. <laughs> and of course, everybody gets fined five dollars. Happy, happy five. We have so many guests today, and I'm so pleased with that. Obviously, something is happening good. We got to make the best of this, virtu these virtual meetings. Many, many more people joining us to be with us, and that's very, very good. Christina, give us an extra $5, please. I know you, you were sarcastically welcomed, but let me welcome you again to show you that we still love you. You're part of us. Give us, give us an extra $5 for absenting yourself for so long. I hope you haven't been to the doctor. <laughs> I'm sure you all would have heard of the fellow who went to the doctor. So sick the doctor gave six months to live. When he couldn't pay the bill, you know, the doctor gave six months more. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to find the side. Say Adam, Adam and Eve were in paradise. You know, how you know they were in paradise? Because Adam didn't have a mother in law. People give mother in law a bad rap, don't they? Anyway, so, so many restaurants are still closed, but this tourist went to the restaurant, sat down for breakfast. Waitress said, well, we have some different things and we have sheep tongue. And with great disdain, the tourist said, I don't eat anything. I don't eat anything out of an animal's mouth. The waitress said, sir, would you like an egg? <laughs> no, father, no, father. You, you did find yourself for that word. That word. Uh -huh. you love it. Was five, <laughs> five, five, 10, 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you what the, what the lady said. <laughs> I, was in the doc, I was in the doctor's office the other day. The fella came in with this big expensive Rolex watch for his, for his doctor. The doctor said, why? What, what is this for? He said, this is for the excellent care, excellent medical care you gave to my uncle. The doctor said, well, but your uncle died. The fella said, yes, that's just it. He died, and I inherited five million dollars, oh, and I wow. brought this watch to say thank you for the care you gave to my uncle. Enjoy the day. Blessings to you all. Thank you, Father <laughs> P. Enjoy. Vice President Diana, birthdays and anniversaries, please. A very pleasant good morning. I'm pleased to announce that we celebrated birthdays with our very own founder and past president, Bill Mills, wishing him many more years of long life and success. Thank you. Thank you to PP Diana <laughs> and our, our announcements. 
everything so directors and chairs maybe have announcements please good morning <laughs> um just a update on the peace park naming last week saturday on fox hill it, it went extremely well it was attended by the minister um the M mp and the former mp they both spoke we had the three form winners peace poem winners and they did an awesome job those poems were extremely good also, a, a reminder of the fun run walk that begins tomorrow for three days. It's $25 donation. And we'd like as much participants as possible, please. Thank you. Thank you. Rotarian Patrick, are there any other announcements? Kami, do you have an announcement this morning? I have um, one question, please. I'll wait until next week, um, President Francis. Okay, thank so you. General discussions first. All right. Any further announcements? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, concerning the upcoming 20th anniversary celebrations, I wish you to note that things are full steam ahead but we really need people's participation. Uh, past presidents, past members, present members, everybody. The way to make money on a banquet or a special celebration like this is the sale of ads. We all know we are working in some very perilous times, but together we can, we can make it work and raise as much as we possibly can in this kind of rough environment. I want to say special shout out to Bill. Happy uh, birthday. I, I was looking through some scrap papers the other day. I think you used to work at Oceanic Bank and you invited me to speak. And I, I just ran across the letter <laughs> that you wrote to thank me. And enclosed was a check for $2,000. That's the most I had ever made for a speech. I wonder, are you still at that bank? Hmm. <laughs> or... See what else you could arrange. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you all. And let's participate, please, with the ads, with your family, friends, your churches, and others. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Father P. Are there any other announcements? <clears throat> Before I invite... Rotarian Tanisha to introduce our guest speaker. This morning, I would like to ask the club to remember pa uh, immediate past president Sophia and her family at this time. Her mother is in hospital. She had a stroke some two weeks ago and I understand that she is still hospitalized. So let us remember the family in prayers. And now I will invite Rotarian Tanisha to introduce our guest speaker, Rotarian Rosina Duncanson, who will speak on the way we speak and bring about peace. Thank you, Rotarian Tanisha. Good morning again, everyone. Rotarian Rosina Duncanson is our... <clears throat> She obtained her Bachelor's of Science degree with a focus in computer science from Tennessee State University and recently completed her Master's of Business Administration with, special, with a specialty in cybersecurity from St. Thomas University. As a leader in risk advisory, she holds the Certified Information Systems or the Certified Information Systems Security Professional designations with over 12 years of professional experience. She is a member of the Healing Communicators Toastmasters Club and Vocational Service Director for her Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau. She embraces her passion for youth development and helping others. 
Through the support she provided to the Junior Achievement Company program as an education advisor and various auxiliary ministries at New Life Ministries Church. She was awarded the 40 and the 40 Bahamas Professional Service Award in 2018. In her spare time, she tries to keep physically active. She also enjoys reading, traveling, well, before COVID, and watching movies. It's with great pleasure. I introduce one of my members and our fellow Rotarian, Rosina Duncanson. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rotarian Tunisia, who's also my mentee in Toastmasters. And honestly, this morning, it is so wonderful to be amongst friends, Rotarians, and persons who are just here to, to listen. And because you all came this morning and I was able to get up this morning, I wanna share a few secrets with, with all of you. So thank you for having me. And I hope that you find today's presentation helpful. And I hope you find some of my secrets to be something you can use going forward. So I'll start by telling you a little story. So I am actually in Toastmasters and one of the types of speeches that we do is called impromptu speaking. Now impromptu speaking is a speech where there's no preparation in advance. There's no writing, there's no researching in advance. You get the topic and you have two to three minutes to speak on this topic. So I entered in a competition and the topic for that day was, if you had any superpower in the world, what power would you choose? And I'll open the floor and ask you, what did you think that I would have chosen as a superpower in that particular speech? Anybody feel free to answer. Any you superpower know, in the world. What's that? Superwoman. Being a Rotarian. Be a Rotarian, superwoman. Anything else? To be invisible. To be invisible. Anyone else? To read minds. To read minds. Those are fantastic powers, but believe it or not, I chose none of them. The power I chose at that particular time was in the moment, extremely weird, but extremely powerful. The power I chose was the power to resolve conflict in the moment. I wanted to have the power to walk into a space and make peace. And I also wanted to ensure that my power was contagious. That's long before COVID was a thing. I wanted a power that was so contagious that anybody in that space would catch it and pass it on. And because of my power, they too can ensure that persons can resolve conflict and bring peace. Now, the funny thing about the impromptu speech is, how do you find thoughts so quickly? And I believe that thoughts are brought quickly based on what you allow yourself to be surrounded by. At that particular time, I was watching a series called Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time was a series about old stories with you know, um, fantasies and, and superpowers and things that people can do. And because of that particular series I watched, that was the first thing that came to my mind. And when you think about your platform and what you can do, what you spend your time around, what you listen to, what you have in your mind tends to come to mind quickest and fastest. And so if you have two to three minutes to speak impromptu, what would you say? What would influence your thoughts? And what would be something that would come out of your mouth at that moment? And if your words were contagious, what would you be passing on? What would people take from what you say and what you do and what would they repeat because you did it? And that reminded me that there's extreme power in us. We have platforms. We have opportunities in our jobs and our vocations to be just that, agents of peace. The ability for us to use a moment to impact a person. Another story that I have, I worked in a major corporate call center in the US. Hundreds of calls coming in a day. People calling with all kinds of problems. Now I was fortunate because of the training, persons came in with not just a small problem, but a escalator problem. I'm not sure of how many of you are aware of what an escalator call is. When a person calls in and they ask for a manager, they have had enough. They, have, they don't talk to anybody at any lower level. They want management. I want to get this fixed. I want to get this fixed now. I'm highly upset. So a call comes in and a person is angry, cursing, carrying on the whole nine. Like they are just at the mouth. And what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to return the words that are being given to me? Or am I supposed to just take it? What should my actions be? And again, I open the floor. If you had a call come in and someone was using profanity to you, what would you do? 
pass the call to my manager. Pass the call on, okay. What else would you do? Hang up. Hi, hang up, okay. <laughs> <I'll do that. laughs> wait, wait patiently, allow them to fully vent and then ask them to explain why they feel that way. I second that. I totally the, agree. Like, Except mm -hmm. for hanging up, most of those things are great things to do, but mm -hmm. hanging up is actually possible, but with some pre-direction. So what they did in my training was they ensured that we were one prepared for these calls. They're gonna come. People are going to be angry. Conflict is going to happen, yes. but preparation is key. So when a call like that comes in, I have two options. If they do not ask for a manager, I don't pass them to a manager. You don't hand over someone angry to someone else for them to be absorbed in the anger. So I have an option. I say to the customer really kindly, sir, I understand that you're upset, but I cannot help you if you continue to speak to me like that. And I said that as calmly as possible more than once. Sir, ma'am, I'm really sorry that you're having this problem, but unfortunately, if you continue with this language, I am unable to help you. If it still continues, I say to them, unfortunately, because of the language, I cannot assist you. And I am going to disconnect this call, but feel free to call back and we can help you further and then I can hang up the phone. That training in advance gave me the tools and tips to be able to, one, not take it on because conflict is something that requires us to actively participate. It takes two persons to have a conflict. To have a fight requires two people. There's no fight of one person stands still and another one is just attacking. It's more of a beat up session versus a fight. So it requires someone to say, I'm not going to continue this process. And so that particular tip helped me, one, to not feel like it was personally attacking me and two, not having to take it. Now, I was also able to take an escalated call, meaning that I was the manager the call got handed over to. Someone angry and upset, but I heard the tip that was used. Listen, mm -hmm. first stop and listen, figure out what the problem is. You can't solve a problem you don't know exist. And so the first thing to do is stop and just listen. Listen and then ensure that your response does not invoke more anger and more conflict. I'm kind of fortunate. I was told that I have a very calming voice, but that's not always the case. I could be pretty angry as well, and I can be pretty riled up, talk really quickly. And the truth is, I'm sure each one of you can do it too. And so be very mindful that the way you speak to someone in their moment can truly dictate their response. So be patient and listen and see what the problem is. I promise you the call sign experience for me was one of the most humbling experiences only because as the person trying to provide service, my job was to ensure the customer was happy, whether I was happy or not, whether I wanted to be happy or not. And so I had to, at the moment, put on a show. But the truth is that show allowed customers, one, to not be angry, two, to get the service they needed, and three, to provide the company the ability to be seen as one of the leading companies in that particular industry. But the biggest person in there was, was me. But my training, my preparation, and my mindset was how I was able to do that. Rotarians and guests, I'm telling you the same thing. They're, they're going to be conflicts. So you're going to have someone come at you angry, upset, with a whole lot going on. But how you respond to them, your level of patience, preparation, and the ability to say in that moment, hi. I am unable to continue this conversation with you if you keep doing this, but I am prepared to help you if you adjust. Your words have the power to resolve conflict and your words have the power to resolve peace. So I'll take you back now to my Toastmasters journey. As a Toastmaster, like I mentioned, there are several types of speeches that we can provide. Impromptu speeches, research speeches, and just a regular speech. I've watched in particular persons who have issued the most powerful motivational speeches ever, all because of how they use their voice. You can speak really calm and really quiet. And the truth be told is it's a great speech, but it's extremely boring. There's not a whole lot of power in that particular speech. But if you can express your voice and say, hey, can you hear me? You grab attention and you change things. And the way you speak also changes how people react and how they feel. And so it's not just your words and what you use, but how you use your words, how you say them, your tone, what we call vocal variety, the ability to adjust your voice high and low, use emotions, sound really sad, or really happy, 
And all these things trigger and invoke the ability to bring about a change in moment, change in conflict, peace. Peace. What we really want is peace. But the truth of the matter is it's in us to have won those things in advance, training, preparation, what we put in our minds to how we use it in the moment that it counts the most and being patient enough and understanding enough to allow someone to one, calm down, honor the problem and provide that resolution. I'm gonna pause here for questions. The floor is open. Rotarians, you're invited to ask your questions. <laughs> I will offer a comment. I like your voice. Thank you. I second that. That's calming. <laughs> Questions, please. Have you ever had a situation where you hang up and they call back with the same anger? Yes. Yes, I have. So I worked in a call center for a telephone company mobile cell phones. Could you imagine an area where towers are down, phones are down, and people are angry because we've become so reliant on these devices. And so, yes, I've had the same customer call in more than once. Um, once they're not cursing, I can take it. It's the profanity that ends the call for me. People are going to be angry. I understand anger, but I will not tolerate disrespect. Mm -hmm. So let's change the topic to what would the caller say? Uh, this is just a hypothetical, but let's say I had a problem with a, a company uh, delivering packages in the US at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Package still hasn't been delivered. I, I've phoned multiple, uh, not me, somebody else. <laughs> phoned multiple times. Increasingly, I just get angry or that person gets angrier and angrier. Uh, what advice would you have for that person? We're now almost three months out. You are the representative receiving the call or you're the customer that didn't get the package? I'm the customer. And so I'm, how would you, how would you, what would you recommend to the customer to try to get this resolved? Now, the, the thing about resolution about those kind of things is the, the supply chain process. What I would want to do first is try my best to make that bond with the customer to let them know it's going to require some time to do the research, but be honest with whatever advice I give them. Don't just pacify them with content, but pacify them with, with facts and truth. So if you're going to say you're going to help them, then do just that. Take their number, get their email, get something that says, I'm going to be deliberate with trying to resolve the issue. The customer is going to need some fact and some follow-up to know that you do care about resolving this issue. So by emailing them in return or phoning them back will show that you have, or them would feel more comfortable that they did receive the resolution or start to receive the resolution that they would hope to get. That would be my first point of start. The customer needs to feel that they can trust the rep and they've gotten some level of content trust was established. Thank you. No problem. Morning, 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 morning. Great job, Rosina. Great to have you. It's great to see you. Um, in your role currently, I know you have uh, certain types of clients. Mm -hmm. And also, you talk about the call center in the U.S. Mm -hmm. How did you find the different dynamics as far as culture um, and handling certain, I mean, I, I have similar experiences too, but I found that you had to adjust the way you do certain things, especially with our culture. You could be calm all you want, but they still going off. But... You explain to me what was your experience like um, dealing with different cultures mm -hmm. when faced with conflict? So I guess I'll, I'll back up a, a bit. I'm fortunate to have not just call center experience, but I've also worked front desk at a hotel. So face-to-face -face experience as well. And so being able to one, because you can't put a front desk person on hold, like you can put a call center person on hold, <laughs> you know, there's not that person in your face. And so having both seen a person angry and then also heard a person angry, you tend to appreciate the whole picture 
but I agree with you wholeheartedly. Coming back home was a bit of a culture shock for me, coming from a US call center and then calling into a local call center. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't appreciate the customer as much as we could and we should, and we don't appreciate problem resolution as quickly as we could and we should. And I feel as though if we can probably jump in front of a problem a little sooner with the way we respond and how we respond, persons won't get as irate as they do. Because the truth is the problems are known up front, but they're ignored. And then the, by the time that the problem finally gets to perhaps you, the manager, the person has had months of non-resolution being ignored. You know, a lot of things has happened. And so your tactic has to be a lot bigger than just the call center role, you're going to have to really go into almost a, a therapist role, trying to really, one, get them to listen to you. And that will be done by trying to just step back and allow them to speak. Let them vent. Without the disrespect, allow them to speak. Listen. Mm -hmm. And once they've understand and seen that you're prepared to listen, then provide true and honest feedback to allow them to see that, yes, you are on the journey to solving their problem. But I do not think that trying to get them to come and the onset will be the best approach. Let them speak, let them vent. And once you hear and know the problem, then you can take the steps to work to resolve it. And again, build that trust. If they see that you can be trusted and you're solving the problem, then I'm sure that they will remain calm and you will perhaps gain a, a very loyal customer. Okay, thank you very much. Very proud to see you here. Good job. <laughs> Any other questions for our guest speaker? There being no other just, questions. Just, just, just a question. Yes, go uh, ahead. Probably all of us could answer this in our minds, even if not on the microphone. In this kind of COVID and tense environment, are we going backward as a people, as a society with respect to solving conflict? Or you see, I know there's always opportunity, but do, or do you see us making progress? That's, that's the bottom line. I want to ask you to clarify the question a little bit. When you say going backwards, what do you mean? Uh, do you see, is it harder to operate in this kind of tense environment in solving conflict? In other words, if you don't have a job, if you're living in a house with a number of people, you don't like them in the first place and you only have to be there, you have to be there so many hours a day. Those things bring on conflict, mm -hmm. right? And of course, people with an inability to resolve them would just go deeper into the situation and deeper in the hole, so to speak. Uh, are, are there any courses or any counsel that you want to give to such people who are in very tense circumstances. So it's, it's funny you, you said that um, this morning, what I had to start doing was, was yoga. I'm grateful to have a job. I'm still working from home. I'm stuck in the house, but it's about the mindset, right? Am I stuck in the house? Or am I safe in the house? Right? So the first thing is really changing, changing your mindset. Um, persons who may be unemployed in a very difficult position with a house full of people, Again, is it that they are solely unemployed or are they now free to try new things and expand their horizons to be able to use the skills as they have learned? I think sometimes we focus so much on what we don't have and we don't focus on what we do have and what we could have. And I think it starts one with individual mindset and changing our perspective because we always see what's happening right now is such a bad thing. But if we were to just look at another side of the coin, look at another perspective, yes, it's bad, but is there anything good that's come out of it? Like, is there any, anything good that's happened? And can we at least focus on some of the good things as well? And if we can focus on the good things, we can focus on the things that are positive, then that would truly allow us to have a different way of doing things and a different feel of doing things. You mentioned being in the house with people you don't like, but how do we get there in the first place? You know, people who get, got married, how did you choose a, a spouse or a mate that you didn't like in the first place? You know, I think we don't make true and, and sincere relationships. I think we have a lot of superficial bonds that we've made. And when we stay together long enough, we realize how superficial those bonds are. And so I would say, take this time and let's really get, let's get deep and let's get real and get positive. Let's reassess and kind of heal the bonds we have, making them true and making them deep and be honest. And then find ways to work together to come to a common goal. I think if we work together, there's a lot of things we can do. 
I think we try to do things individually. So if you're a household of five people, as five people, you have a whole team. There's a lot of things a team can do. Why don't we try to do things positive together to benefit the family versus just fighting against each other and staying right where we're at. So my thoughts are one, change your mindset. Two, let's work together. And three, I think together and collectively, we can truly bring about change, and bring about peace. Great. Are there any other questions for Rosina this morning? <clears throat> there being no other questions for Rosina, we'll proceed to <clears throat> bring the vote of thanks by Rotarian Gwen. <clears throat> Hi, good morning once again. Uh, we are so happy, Ms. Duncanson, that you could join us and share with us some of your ideas and secrets on how to keep peace and uh, resolving conflicts. My superpower would be patience. That was super interesting and you do have a common voice. I need that. I have a 13 year old who sometimes challenges me greatly because she's turning into a brilliant but sometimes typical teenager. So I certainly appreciate a bit more insight into knowing how to diffuse certain situations. I'm sure many of us do. So thank you on behalf of Rotary Sunrise for taking the time to talk with us so early this morning. And we would also like to present you with a small token of that appreciation. It will be delivered to you by Rotarian Tanisha Ferguson. Thank you once again. Thank you, Rosina. An excellent presentation. And I'm sure all of us this morning would have learned something as to how to handle an irate person or even a family member. Thank you once again, lovely presentation. Thanks. And now we'll have to Raffle by Secretary Donet. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. I don't know if you missed getting your ticket. So if your name is not here, if you don't have a ticket, you don't have a chance. Now, let me check my chat because the chat is lighting up at uh, the moment. Okay, they're just saying, great job, Rosina. Okay, so. Do you feel lucky this morning? Let me show you the raffle again. It's well, no, well, I can't because uh, my screen is being shared. But yes, it it's is. a two rig coffee maker that would look great on your kitchen counter or in your office. And now we're gonna pick the lucky winner. Mm. Do you say? Yes. You want another ticket? I said twenty. So that's, shouldn't that be six times? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I only see my name like two or three times here on this list. Let me see. I hope uh, you're not Donette, I don't see my oh, name. Yeah. It should be six times. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Donette is my name there, Tonya. Tonya? I don't yeah. see me. Tonya. It's there? Yes, right there. Great, great. Make it sure. Ouch, ouch, I didn't mean to do the this. Ball, oh, yeah. stop. Hold on, hold on. Let me stop <laughs> that because I need to add Kemi a few more times. I think I only had Kemi. Uh-oh. Right. Simone won for 10. Sorry. And you would not believe who won just now, but that was a fake um, thing. I need to add. <laughs> Don't you say it. Dino one more time. Huh? I, need Don't say. My lawyer. I need Did to you? call my lawyer. Did you see who it was? Did you see who it was? No, we didn't, but. My no. gosh. You can do it. Anybody else missing? Let me resolve the conflict. Y'all just give me the thing, man. All right. So I think that's Kemi um, that I needed to add. And Did I'm you put to... Simone in? Simone. Is she there? No, I don't. You think. need to add Simone. Yeah. Matter of fact, she was the first one right. to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you might want to take away Dino. <laughs> All right, let me add some more random. For yeah. sure, I'll take Dean or the hanger no. Okay, anybody else missing? <laughs> so I have Gwen, Patrick, 
Leon, Nancy, um, Father P, Kemi, Felix, Dino, Melanie, H, Eric, Carla, Rosina, Derek, Tanya, or oh, Derek should be there six times as well. So let me add Derek a few more times. Bear with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we don't want to introduce coming here bringing our prizes. <laughs> Stop it. He is um, one of us. <laughs> we have Tanya, Leah, Rafael, Rafael and Delisa. Did I miss anyone? That should be there. What about what's happening to Cresswell and Lavelle? You don't drink coffee? I don't get up in the mornings. Oh, <laughs> That's wow. why you need the coffee. <laughs> you need the coffee, Cresswell. All right, I think we're ready to do a raffle. All right, so let's go. Uh-oh. All right, and the winner is Derek. Hey. Okay. Who's, who's the winner? Derek. Derek. Oh, yes. congratulations, Derek. Call my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Count it again. Count it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so uh, we had a little blooper this morning in that I prematurely did the raffle and the winner was Rosina. So I'm going to give Rosina mm. a bottle of wine for that great presentation this morning. Yes, um, yes. For actually winning the first time it, I, I, the, the raffle was done, um, but it was not ready. So for that, I apologize and you'll get a bottle of wine. Thank you, Wonderful. no problem. Wonderful. I'm also going to see my guest, Derek, to get the real prize as well. So I'm good all around. Perfect. I just love this piece of peace. <laughs> Thank you. Donna Don Rosina is a Christian. She don't drink. Send the wine to me. <laughs> she needs to calm someone down. Oh. If she's Anglican, she drinks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Only thing we are getting a break right now. <laughs> we only getting those. Wine. <laughs> you have to leave the wine until after Lent. But <laughs> so Tanisha, you can stop by the office and pick up a bottle of wine um, before you deliver the prize, so she can get both. Will do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Secretary Donat. And now we'll have our four-way test by Rotarian Cresswell. <clears throat> uh, colleagues, the last time I um, was invited to do this test, I had to mark it on a curve, so I'm going to make this an open book test. So join me as we actually sit this test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it, the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is it, Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Guys, I'm going to let this... Will, the, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Your results are immediately going to be posted in your inbox. <laughs> I, I see you almost miss a page. <laughs> Um, thank you, Rotarian Cresswell. The final toast, Rotarian Alex. <clears throat> You're muted, Rotarian Alex. You may have missed him. I'm not seeing him. He probably got disconnected. He's not on president. He may have to call someone else. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Rotarian Dino, for oh, the, the final toast, please. Rotary around the world. Rotary around, around the world. The world. Around. Just before we conclude this meeting this morning, I want to say last week we spoke about the vaccines that uh, wrote the RCOB is charged with managing. 
Uh, the point persons for our club will be I, PP Sophia, Rotarians, Patrick, Marsha, and Gwen. Those persons will be approaching you as, need, as we need volunteers to continue uh, with the program. So you will be approached and asked to volunteer as needed. Thank you and everyone have a pleasant and a blessed day. Those, Hold on, Pauline. Uh, visitor, visiting Rotarians and our visitors online, you're always welcome to join us. And I want to thank you for participating in our meeting this morning. Have a blessed day all. Indeed. Okay. Bye, bye. everyone. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Thank you all for coming. Rotary Club of Southeast Nassau, we owe you a visit because you <laughs> came in your bus load this morning. <laughs> yes, all right. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Bye, bye yeah. everyone. Secretary bye. Donna, can you send me the information so I could pass it on to our members on how to get you the funds for raffle, please? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.